Collected Sayings of Kodo Sawaki, Chapter 23. To you who say that doctors and priests have it good. In the first year of the Meiji era, the five-story pagoda of Horyuji was up for sale for 50 yen, and it still found no potential buyers. Then, when they finally found somebody to buy the five-story pagoda of Kofukuji for 30 yen, he only wanted to burn it down to gather up the gold afterwards. They told him, if you do that, the whole town of Nara will go up in flames. So he said, all right, to hell with it. This is the only reason the pagoda has survived to this day. The market value of things like these changes. There's nothing great about things whose market value change. We could also do without them. There are more important things. Zazen is what matters. Outdated views. What adults teach children are often nothing more than outdated views. The view that good is good and bad is bad has already had its best days. Even a vegetable which was once good is inedible once it's past its prime. We've got to always be able to see things from a fresh perspective. You say, that's important. But what's important? There's nothing that's so important. When we die, we've got to leave everything behind anyway. The cultural goods and national treasures in Nara or Kyoto will sooner or later disappear. So we could actually set them on fire right now. Recently, there are temples in Kyoto that run hotels or boarding houses. It's strange how some people can't think of anything besides money and food. Did Ryokan leave money behind when he died or not? We're relieved to hear he didn't. But in the world, people think differently. Here, we can see that the way a monk thinks is completely the opposite of how the world thinks. Today's priests haven't left their homes. They've simply moved from their straw-roofed huts into tile-roofed houses, like a baker's son who has remodeled and now runs a crematorium. During certain ceremonies, the master has to change his robes constantly. That's why somebody once said, a priest isn't so different from a geisha. Be careful, or you'll end up like that too. A home-leaving monk means someone who completely lets go. It means letting go of group stupidity. Today's priests only want to cling to things. That's why they're good for nothing. When you feed a cat treats, it stops hunting mice, and a spoiled dog keeps no watch. Even humans aren't any good for work when they've got money and can take it easy. For 300 years, the Tokugawa policy was to control the priests with gluttony and warm robes so that they finally, like wild hogs that degenerate into ordinary pigs, lost their tusks and claws and allowed their marrow to be sucked out. Buddhists during the Tokugawa era were completely happy to be yoked by Tokugawa policy. The fact that they didn't even consider themselves as religious is the reason for the current downfall of Buddhist teachings. Today's priests are ashamed of their robes 
because of the distrust that they aroused after the suppression of Buddhism during the Meiji era, the world laughs at these shady characters. Today's priests are ashamed of their robes and they are ashamed of being priests in order to be recognized as little as possible they only wear their robes when they go to do business only as priests can they earn their living that's their dilemma catholic priests always wear their robes they are proud to wear them now is that good or not it isn't easy to be a priest without making a business out of it Yet a priest shouldn't really have anything to do with business. A person has to set off fearlessly towards his own goal. A Buddhist has to have a clear attitude to life. Every single day of your life in society is a test. And your whole life long you mustn't fail that goes above all for the mind that saves suffering beings. Even if you're only angry ones, suffering beings won't come near you. Even if you're only greedy ones, suffering beings will go away from you. This is where you've got to have a good handle on the way society thinks. Chapter 24 to you who say that priests run an easy business. It'd be funny if ghosts did their haunting whenever the priest botched a funeral. But even when the priests botch a funeral, the ghosts don't do anything. That's why the priest's life floats in limbo. Even a radio or a television doesn't transmit images or sound when it's not connected properly. Compared to this, priests are pretty sloppy. All I see are priests whose robes are a mess and don't even know how to sit zazen or go begging. Priests desperately try to get by through paying lip service to the Buddha's teaching and lay people hope to get something out of it when they have priests pay lip service. How could this have anything to do with the Buddha's teaching? Earning your living with memorized lip service? Today's priests say Zazen isn't in demand anymore. They say Sawaki is out of touch with the times. Buddhism has got to have access to something which neither communism nor democracy can easily disregard. It also has to have something that is capable of leading to where communism and democracy cannot. If only all the decorations that Buddhists have piled up wouldn't get in the way so much. Priests like to ask, what will become of Buddhism in the future? But who said that Buddhism is already at its end? Who says that Shakyamuni and Bodhidharma were idiots? Isn't it simply the priests who haven't any feeling for the way and who are idiots? But since I can't really say that, I prefer to ask back, how about your wife and your children? Do they believe in you? or not. A Zen monk is someone who leads a free life centered around the way of Buddha. Truly becoming a home-living monk involves recognizing the true self which can never be stained. It means creating your own life so that it fills the whole universe. Tearing away all the Indian myths and all the Chinese myths and only practicing the naked content of the Buddha's teaching, that's leading a Zen life. If we're not careful, spectators will pop up among religious people. 
When spectators appear, things aren't any more like they should be. They turn religion into theater. Ascetism is nothing more than the search for stimulation. The priests in the past were either seeking this stimulation or they were simply good for nothings. None of this has anything to do with religion. Some people say, I'm staying unmarried. People wear so many different masks. Magic tricks aren't wanted here. If we don't watch out, religion will become a magic show. No one else stands in the spot where you are. That means no spectators. Wherever spectators appear, it quickly becomes a sellout. Samadhi isn't a sellout. If priests aren't careful, they start putting on a show, and a bumbling burlesque show at that. There was a time when there were still stars who understood something about good acting, but today they're hardly to be found. Anyway, even when the stars are acting, they are still only actors. When we lose sight of unsurpassable wisdom, we start comparing our abilities with other ordinary people. Simply have faith in unsurpassable wisdom. You know what it means to be nothing special in the ordinary sense, but you've got to really understand that in the world of religion, those who are considered something special are nothing special. What are your real motives? Sooner or later, you've got to honestly ask yourself this question. Don't you sometimes unconsciously make yourself into a performer who is only concerned with his show? Only you yourself can understand. Others cannot even manage to see it. When it's about spectators, it's got nothing to do with the Buddha Dharma. Priests today want to do something for society, so they give money from the rich to the poor and play the merciful ones. This has nothing in the last to do with the Buddha Dharma. Buddha's teaching can only be practiced by yourself. When organizations arise, it isn't religion anymore, but business. There is a certain sort of bad deed that is called doing good. When a throng of trainee monks in the main temples read half of the Shodoka quickly and loudly, the pilgrims are overcome with awe. I've got no idea what's so awe-inspiring about that, but somehow everyone is overcome with awe. These monks only gather together because they want to have their license, and the main temples do business by accumulating such monks. The same is true even for the temples in China. That's how they do business, without recognizing business as business. The Buddha's teaching has declined these days because practice has declined. People just can't get it into their guts that practice itself is awakening. Why is Japanese Buddhism worthless? Because in Japan, you'll find the largest number of Buddhist treasures, just no practice. And when there's no practice, there's no Buddha Dharma. Even if the seed of Buddha's teaching is there, it can't begin to function as long as it isn't cultivated with practice. Chapter 25 To you who want to study a little Buddhism to improve yourself. Empty theories is what we call it when bystanders play around with terminology. The Buddha Dharma is nothing for spectators. It's about you. Religion doesn't mean changing the world around myself. It means changing my own eyes, my ears, 
my way of seeing and my head. The human body is set up in a very practical way. But what do we use this practical body for anyway? Usually, we use it as a slave to our illusions. The Buddha Dharma means using the body in a way that doesn't make it a slave to our illusions. That means putting body and mind in order. The Buddha Dharma isn't an idea. It's about the problem. How do I deal with myself? The way of Buddha means putting the absolute into practice, realizing it through practice. The Buddha Dharma means making a constant effort without getting anything for yourself. This is nothing that can be determined by asking, what do I have to do? Nonetheless, you've got to do what you've got to do, and you mustn't do what you mustn't do. When you've got to give something, give even your own head. When you mustn't give anything, don't give the tip of your tongue. Practice isn't in things, it's in actions. Only a Buddha, together with a Buddha, is capable of penetrating this. From the Lotus Sutra. Only a cat understands the feelings of a cat. Only a Buddha understands the Buddha Dharma. Only a person who practices the Buddha Dharma is a Buddha. Imagining a Buddha without practicing the Buddha Dharma has nothing to do with the Buddha Dharma. Religion is useless when it's paralyzed by concepts. Religion is life, and life has to keep moving. You're stuck if you have nothing more to say than the mantra, I take refuge in the Lotus Sutra. Life's got to be able to move in all directions, left and right, up and down. Don't turn into a mummy. Don't let yourself dry out. The whole world believes the practice of the Buddha way is about cutting off your illusions one by one, like dimming a lamp until all of a sudden it goes out. But Mahayana practice is vowing and working towards saving all suffering beings before saving myself. It's necessary to deliberately leave the illusions as they are in order to be of use to living beings. This means we've got to be completely human. Being monotonously perfect isn't any good for anyone. What has to be important in religion is how you live your life. The Buddha Dharma isn't some old legend like once upon a time there was an old man and an old woman. It's not a fairy tale. The Buddha Dharma shouldn't be at all separate from your own problem, separated from yourself, separated from this instant. There is no Buddha Dharma. The Buddha Dharma doesn't lie in the distance. It isn't history either. It is you. No social relationship, whether it's hierarchical or among equals, has anything to do with the Buddha Dharma. Relationships like these aren't absolute. It's only because of ordinary feelings that we consider them real and rely on them. Don't you see that the loved one you now hold in your arms will die? And even a millionaire will go when his time comes. The old always talk about the good old days they miss so much. And young people always make fun of them. But what are young people really doing? They're saying, just wait until we grow up. 
So what both young and old are doing right now is only makeshift. Humans laugh, cry, get angry, complain and suffer within all of their various relationships. Drifting from one life to the next means relying on these relationships and neglecting the present moment. The description of the confusion within these relationships is what we call literature. Zazen, here and now, is free from these relationships. That's why Master Dogen, who had nothing to do with all of this, doesn't make good material for novels. Confusion reigns in the world because everyone uses their own ruler to measure what's big and small. Buddhism speaks of moving freely within big and small, narrow and wide. Buddhism is immeasurable and limitless. If you're trying to understand Buddhism and aren't paying attention to this immeasurable limitlessness, you'll miss it completely. Chapter 26 To you who like hearing something inspirational about Buddhism. Many say, no matter how much Sawaki talks, his lectures don't inspire me in the least. Obviously, that's because I myself am not inspirational. The Buddha Dharma leads you to the place where nothing is special. They say, when I hear Sawaki talk, my faith cools down. Now, I'm going to really put their faith on ice. This sort of faith is nothing but superstition. They say, Sawaki's talks don't awaken any faith in me. They don't awaken any superstition, that's all. Whatever sutra you read, it's always about devoting your body and life to the way. Why is it that the whole world believes religion means praying to Buddha for good health and good business? However much good they do, everything that humans do is bad. If you give, all day you think, I gave. If you do religious practice, you think, I practiced, I practiced. If you do something good, you never forget, I did good, I did good. Does this mean that we should do something bad instead? No, even when we do good, it's bad. When we do something bad, it's even worse. Beware of doing good. A person who does good thinks they've done good. That's why they're worse than someone who has done something bad. Believe me, it's easier for those who do bad because they're humbled by it. If you do good, you start to work yourself up about everything bad you suddenly see in others. When you have done something bad, you're quiet because your own ass itches. People don't only calculate when it's a matter of money. In everything they do, they try to bargain up or down. That's because their body and mind haven't dropped off. Once body and mind have dropped off, all of this business stops. Dropping off body and mind means immeasurability, limitlessness. The willow is green. The blossoms are red. Buddhist teaching is self-evident, but people cover it up with unnecessary categories, good, bad, useful, useless, and so on. Rather than simply sit in Zazen, people try to put a melody on top of it. That's why they are able to sing their Buddhist hymns and somehow feel pious doing it. Do good leave the bad? 
there's no doubt about that. But is it so clear what's good and what's bad? Good and bad go hand in hand. Zazen goes past good and evil. It's not moral education. If something like emptiness or nothingness existed, then it wouldn't be emptiness or nothingness. The expression seeing emptiness means that there isn't even an emptiness to see. As long as you don't get sick, you forget your body. Even I forgot my legs when they were still strong enough to walk and run. My legs only seem so important to me now because they're so weak. Whoever is healthy functions without being conscious of their own health. It's the flaws that bother us. When no mental phenomena appear, there's nothing to worry about. Buddhism must teach the liberation that has nothing to do with contracts and words. It is that which only a Buddha and a Buddha can confine to each other. If they don't both understand it together, it will never be understood at all.